Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to the Battle of Stalingrad, 1942-1943. I don't know if the battle took a whole year or I'm not sure, maybe it started in December and it ended in January. Not long ago, I have reacted to another video called Victory Day in Russia. It was a music video. That was so good, man. I enjoyed it. I'm going to link it in the description box below. But yeah, please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the content. Comment on what you see next and subscribe for more content. Let's see how it ended. Battle of Stalingrad, August 23rd, 1942 to February 2nd, 1942. From August to February, they were fighting. Oh my God. That's almost what? September, October, November, December. That's six months. Of fighting. 1943. As the Germans advanced towards Stalingrad in the summer of 1942, the war came to the locals of the city, and evacuation was slow to the speed of the Wehrmacht's advancement. Because the city bore Stalin's name, it was of high importance for the morale of the Soviet forces to hold it. The desperation for Soviet resistance to the German advance was clear. Work frantically continued in the weapon factories. T-34 tanks could be seen rushed into battle, unpainted, and sometimes lacking gun sights. Wow. Men not already in the Red Army were formed into militia and sent into battle, sometimes without proper training and with high casualties. This is a problem with World War, the World War, especially World War II. You didn't need to be a soldier to go to the battlefield. Imagine if somebody comes to your village, they kill, no, they don't even need to kill anybody, or just knowing that there is a chance for somebody to come to your village or to your city and kill everyone inside, if they give you a gun and tell you, go and fight, you're going to go and fight. These women and children dug trenches and built protective fortifications, but would also fight as machine gunners in gun crews and as scouts and snipers. On the 12th of September, the first German troops moved into the city. They chose to attack straight into the urban area and soon found themselves in brutal close quarters house to house battles. The Soviets established frontline positions as close as possible to the German lines, which was the safest place for German air and artillery attacks. In August, Stalin had sent his top general, Georgi Zhukov, to supervise the whole southern front, and Vasily Chuikov took over the 62nd Army in the city. While Zhukov prepared for a counteroffensive, Chuikov pushed his troops into combat. When asked how he interpreted his task, he responded, We will defend the city or die in the attempt. Oh, Reinforcements were ferried under fire across the Volga into the ruins with enough troops making it to the other side to keep at least part of the city in Soviet hands. Honestly, I don't think me or my generation understand how courageous those people were. We will fight and try to win it, otherwise we will die trying to protect it. Man, the courage you have to, to, to go through this, like the mental, the, mental, the mental strength that you must have to do what they did is just something else. Soviet casualties were immensely high, but German casualties were mounting as well. To ensure the defense of Stalingrad, Stalin had issued order number 227 on July 27, 1942, known as not one step backwards. Armies were formed with a second line of barrier troops behind them who acted as a last line of defense. Officers and soldiers who deserted could also be sent to penal battalions, which was a virtual death sentence. Red Army troops built a maze. Yeah, of course, imagine if you and your brothers are fighting together and then you run away from the battlefield. It is going to demoralize the people who stay, so you don't have the right to leave. The... Imagine also leaving your brothers to die. It just doesn't make any sense. But people, when you when you are in such a condition of fear, you can do almost anything. It is human nature. Maze of trenches in damaged buildings and use the sewer system to sneak past the enemy. Both sides employed snipers, and the destroyed buildings of Stalingrad made it an ideal environment for cover. The most famous Soviet sniper celebrated as a hero was Vasily Zaitsev, oh. with 225 confirmed kills. At the end of September and in mid-October, the Germans came close to victory. 
but the defenders clung onto part of the city's northern factory district. The advance to Stalingrad brought other problems for the Axis forces. Hitler had fired several of his generals in the summer after arguments over his strategic plan. Now he was making many command decisions himself. The winter caused problems for both sides, breaking... I'm not even sure, was Hitler a, a soldier? Or was he just a politician who came to power? I think he was a politician who came to power, he wasn't a soldier. So why would, I mean, it is arrogance and ego. Otherwise, why would you argue with your generals? It doesn't make any sense. Breaking down but tanks and making weapons more difficult to operate. However, the Red Army had better clothing for the freezing cold conditions, with quilted jackets and fur hats. Stalingrad had expanded the German front, and as a consequence, the Italian and Romanian armies were brought in to support the flanks of the 6th Army and 4th Panzer Army. Fighting inside Stalingrad was sapping German forces and causing them to pull units from flanks into the city. The Romanian and Italian troops were poorly trained and had low morale. Therefore, they would be the first targets for the planned Soviet counteroffensive. The Soviets attacked Hungarian positions north of Stalingrad on November 19th and to the south the next day, devastating the Romanian fronts. Within a week, the two advancing Red Army forces had joined up and cut Stalingrad off. General Paulus asked permission to break out, which he could have done, but Hitler refused, instead promising to resupply the trapped German army by air. General Erich von Manstein was brought in to lead a relief attempt for the surrounded pocket, but had to retreat before Christmas. The air supply effort also cost the Luftwaffe hundreds of transport aircraft and only managed to deliver a fraction of its supplies. Now short of fuel, food, and ammunition, the German 6th Army now faced superior forces all around them. The last German troops in the city would surrender on February 2, 1943, but sporadic fighting around the city went on until March. The Battle of Stalingrad was a crushing blow to Nazi Germany, and the losses to the Wehrmacht could not adequately be replaced. In my history class, I was told that this battle was the battle that won the war. Because after this battle, I think this was the first great victory against Hitler. And so after this, the moral of the, the, the people, like the allies, was high up. And so they were able to even fight and conquer more than that. Next time, I'm going to be doing a video about the Canadians' contribution. Because I know Canada, too, had some contributions to do in order for them to assist something and add something to the war. But let me just read some of the comments over here. This guy said, a German soldier in his diary documented, we would enter the home, fight the Reds and win the kitchen. But then my God, we would find ourselves fighting the Reds for the bedroom. Man, those people are courageous. They were everywhere. They didn't, the thing is that like, you heard the, 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 the chief, the commander in chief, what he said, either, we get the, the city or we die trying to protect it. What could you say or do after that? But yeah, that was a great video. You learn something every day. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like if you did so. Comment on what you see next and subscribe for more content. Another comment here says, the Germans say they are willing to sacrifice anything to take the city. You will show them the meaning of sacrifice. Unknown Soviet soldier. Man, the Soviet are just something else.